Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed on him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. Five. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Verse 9. And some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. Verse 13. So they, they brought to the Pharisees him that was aforetime blind. It was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I do see. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Verse 17. They say unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, he's a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them saying, is this your son? You say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. By what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He'll, he shall speak for himself. 22. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Verse 26. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Therefore you, you would hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? <laughs> then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke unto Moses, as for this fellow... We know not from whence he is. Verse 30. The man and answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. When he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. 39. 
And Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? <laughs> Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. <laughs> Jesus, such a troublemaker, isn't he? I tell you. Started this all. Who art this man? <laughs> Once again, in all of these stories, we go from the physical when they start out with, with the actual seeing. And at the end, he's talking about the spirituality of them. And they're still blind. Yep. And deaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it, it was by the very act of man born blind sight that he was trying to show them by what he did literally what he wanted to do for them all spiritually. Julie? Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's that wholeness, that wholeness thing. <clears throat> and mine, on, mine on verse 35 says, dost thou believe on the son of God? Yeah. Somebody's version had son of man? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the NIV says son of man. Oh, oh okay. But man is capitalized, so. Oh, amen. Interesting. I love how they started off with that question about who sinned. And yet in the end, the Pharisees reiterate it's mm -hmm. because they sinned. <laughs> Him and his parents. And Jesus says, no, neither. Yeah. Neither one of them have. It's interesting. They could think that he sinned before he was born. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, are you he saying said, he we said were, in the womb? Are you yeah. saying we were born sinners? Yeah. Well, okay. The Pharisees are saying that this man sinned in the womb. Well, it's his disciples in two that he's speaking. Nine two that he's speaking to, right? It is not the Pharisees or. Oh, right. Yes. Right. Oh, the disciples asked him, yes. Mm -hmm. Which shows, again, their, their, their way of thinking was just so, so backwards. It was just this, the Jewish culture, you know, it was just looking at anything, anything negative that happened was a condemnation from God. And it's, it wasn't from God. It was the result of sin. You just have to love this guy that was blind. I mean, he's, he's so willing to witness to him. He says, would you also be his disciples? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> his parents might have backed off, but he was perfectly willing to make them spit mad. <laughs> well, it's interesting, the progression, you know, in verse 11, he calls Jesus a man. In verse 17, he calls him a prophet. Mm -hmm. In verse 33, he says, if this man were not from God, and then finally in 38, he calls him Lord. Wow. Amen. Amen. The three and then the fourth. <laughs> fourth is the blessing. <laughs> it's a good observation, yeah. Lord. Yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. There's several of those, too. I like how he, how he challenged them when he said, I've already told you and you don't want to hear me. You don't want to listen. Well, Why do you want to hear it again? Well, that's the third time they question him. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Yeah. They question him three times the same question. Yeah. This man had to be very sure of what happened to him. And, and he must have been. Heck yeah. He wasn't afraid to speak up to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeah, Mrs. White in the Desire of Ages, you know, intimates that it was the spirit of God that came upon him. Yeah. His, how he could speak so powerfully to the Pharisees. Yeah, because he did. Because that was, that. this is one of my favorite chapters. This discourse that he has with them, to me, is just amazing. And he's so innocent because he's he's been healed. I mean, he's, he's proclaiming he's healed. He's not condemning. He's just literally, just literally thinking it through. And, and God is, you know. Well, you know, sure, she, which, 
Jesus in the beginning there, right, in verse 5, says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light. Well, what did he receive? He was in darkness all his life. Mm -hmm. mm. The light. Yep. So explain this to me because I, I didn't understand it. At the time, Pastor Raymond said it. He said, you know, verse six, this idea of mixing saliva with clay. He said, on the Feast of Tabernacles, the priest takes water from Siloam, mixes it with wine, pours it out at the base of the altar. He said, so Jesus was doing this Feast of Tabernacle ceremony on this man. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the light. He's the light of the world. He mm. uses the spittle or the water. Yeah. The and, saliva. He, and he gives this man, yeah, he restores this man's sight. I was, me and Sue were talking about this, and we went right back to creation. Creation. Right. Man was yeah. formed from, from clay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be significant, too, that well, it says go wash in the pool of Siloam. Which yeah. means scent. Right. And and just the fact that the, the, the water from the spittle wasn't enough, there was something more to do. Do you, do you think it was more th or was it um, for everybody else, or else around because we know there were crowds so this would you know give it more impetus of uh, I'm healing this man and, but go wash in the pool and, and see what happens someone would have had to take him too because at that point he's still blind no that but his eyes are covered with clay right yeah. well I, I, I see the washing as baptism well, that's what I was going to say. I see the washing in the in the Siloam, the, the Siloam, the baptism. He believed, and he went. It's almost like the three angels' message there. It's almost like the early rain and the latter rain. Mm. Yeah. If, yep. if the this, washing and regeneration that Titus talks about. If this man didn't sin, and his parents didn't sin, why is he blind? To show the glory of God. Why is he blind? Because there's sin in the world. Because of sin. Because Jesus is targeting what we just talked about last week in chapter 8. He is confronting the devil. He is mm -hmm. stating very clearly he will be bound. He is the one that is the author um, of sin itself. And we've inherited that. So mm -hmm. he's targeting that. This man didn't sin. His parents didn't sin, but he is, um, has a sinful nature. And Christ came, as uh, Don says, to bring light into the world. So he's targeting what he's just talked about because it says at the end of verse 59, it says uh, he passed through the midst of them and so passed. And then it says as Jesus passed by, it kind of gives the indication that this is an ongoing movement. And as he passed by, he saw the man which was blind from birth. And oh. so this comes on the heels of what happened in chapter 8. And so yeah. why, why is he blind? He's blind because of uh, the transgression of the law uh, that happened in heaven. I, I, I love that word, pass by, because it brought me right back to the, the, the blood on the doorpost. Mm. Yeah. Wow. You know? Yeah. Wow. You can see how he's sent because he immediately becomes an apostle he, uh, and is preaching Christ, telling everybody how he's mm -hmm. been healed. Mm -hmm. And then he becomes this wit powerful witness, spirit-filled witness mm -hmm. to the very rulers. Because mm -hmm. he's greater than his becoming, Greater than becoming, his becoming, receiving his sight. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's sighted, it's, it, what you're saying is much greater than receiving sight. Mm -hmm. mm. Is it is is it is it a stretch to say that because he later we find out he's put out of the synagogue that he is now he is now the Christian church. He is the church. Uh, and I almost wonder if he probably followed Jesus and left with him. 
Well, another way of looking at it, Don, is he put out or is he entering into the kingdom of God? Mm. 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 Yeah, <laughs> moving from one kingdom to another. Yes. That's a good one. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right, because he would his his and his parents' thoughts would have been the same as the disciples that what sin, what sin went on that caused me to be blind. Yeah, dispelling. He had to dispel these myths and traditions. Jesus did. Well, you know, in this whole thing, you don't hear him crying out to be healed. Right. He was just sitting there blind. He must have heard Jesus coming, though. You know, it's interesting because when you read... You know, the par there's the parable about the lost coin. The lost coin did not. G somebody went looking for that coin. And, and there's different types of sinners. Um, some, you know, when you go back and read that other parable, this is kind of like that, like the lost coin almost, you know, that Jesus goes looking for that person instead of the person looking for him. I like that. You can see he didn't he didn't turn to Jesus and say, you know, why did you let me be born blind and have to live all this time blind? And he's just mm -hmm. grateful that he can see. Mm -hmm. And he's more than happy to be the witness. And so, you know, and that very experience of suffering and difficulty that God allowed him to go through perfectly equipped him to be that witness that mm. God needed to the to the leaders there. You know, all the, the, the difficulties and trials that God allows to happen to us are actually equipping us to be his witnesses. Mm -hmm. And even the wrong things we do, like Jonah, you know, Jonah ran the wrong way and got thrown into the ocean and swallowed by a fish and vomited out on the seashore, but then he preached to Nineveh and Nineveh worshipped the fish god, Dagon. Mm -hmm. And, mm. you know, he, he had quite a fish story and they listened to him <laughs> to the point that they all believed and repented because this man came out of the mouth of the fish and I'm sure he smelled like it. And <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> but it all, even Jonah's rebellion and disobedience, God actually used to prepare him to do the very job that God called him to do, <laughs> which is well, amazing that same how God vein, can do that. On that same vein, Craig, um, Jesus dispelled the lie first, right? And the fish god there, God dispelled that lie as well, that That's false right. worship. Yeah. Right? And once he That's dispels right. the lie, right? Because when you dispel the lie, the, right, it's there's light. There's yeah. light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So verse 4 and 5, the last part of 4, the night is coming when no one can work. Mm -hmm. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. You know, it's almost like he's saying there's kind of a probation period, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm in the world. Now's the time to accept me. The night mm -hmm. is coming when no one can work. I don't know. What do you think about that phrase? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was thinking about that as well, Laurie, and I think uh, it reflects that we are, we are in the night. We are in darkness, as it's been pointed out. And we, there's nothing of our own accord abilities um, to get us out of that situation of darkness. Uh, there is only one answer, one uh, solution to that and that is Christ uh, we're in mm -hmm. darkness um, we, mm -hmm. we are that blind man that has I think already been noted um, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're in darkness there, there's nothing we can do of our own accord uh, mm -hmm. to um, rescue ourselves from that darkness nothing is he pro prophesying his, his death yeah I think so I was wondering about the Dark Ages. 
Is he talking about the dark ages are coming or when Satan's kingdom will rule? Mm. Well, the dark, the dark ages actually parallel the cross. And it's a, both are, you know, uh, a period of seven with this dark period in the middle. Mm. So it's kind of both. Mm. I think it's it's it, it can be specific, but I think it can be broad reaching too. But when there's no yeah. light in the world, there's darkness. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as he is the light of, of the world, uh, then there's light. But when he is not, when he is dispelled, when people refuse to reject him, like the Pharisees do here. And I think the night there also is the darkest part of night that he that he says. I think when I looked in the the commentary. So, <clears throat> I have a question. In verse 32, it says, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. He, that must have been early on in his ministry, right? Because sure. he had to have, he had to have healed a lot of people. Well, I think what Word they're saying nice. here is I'm there's saying. been years of people that have been physically blind, yet there was no healing at that time. It had to be an act of God. Right. That's what they're saying. It had to be an act of God. Yes. That word for night, it can mean the time of death, mm -hmm. time for deeds of mm -hmm. sin and shame. The time of moral stupidity and darkness, and a time when the weary and also the drunken give themselves up to slumber. <laughs> yeah, it's a dark. It's interesting. Time. Yeah, it's yeah. a dark time mm. because he who does his work does it in darkness. And Jim was right because he is addressing Satan at this time. And I think we can also see the three angels' messages in some ways here and there throughout this. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, even towards the end Absolutely. where it says, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I am come into this world. Well, right there we see the first angel's message repeated again, worshipping and judgment. And, yeah. you know, he's Jesus is calling them to come out of battle, and he's He's calling everybody that's observing to come out of a false system. And he's letting them know what happens when they don't come out of a false system, that they're blind. And, and, and you know, I think of the apostles, like the apostles posed this question, right? Right at the beginning of this chapter. And they're there right there when the Pharisees say, what? They, yeah, yeah. His parents sinned and he sinned. And they're, and they're probably looking at him saying, uh, yeah, but he healed this guy out of his blindness. So how does that work? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. What's interesting to me is it seems to me what Jesus is really saying to the Jewish leaders is you've been blind since birth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That they're not just blind that they've they've never seen <laughs> their whole lives mm -hmm. they, they suffer from generational blindness but he's also telling them but i can heal you i can give you sight because i'm the light of the world mm -hmm. you know in 14 when he says now it was a sabbath when jesus made the clay and opened his eyes what a troublemaker <laughs> yeah he always wants to do it on the sabbath well and and jesus did what he, he rested work. right yes his father's works and in Three that days. rest the, here they 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 took that that um no one must must work on the sabbath and mm -hmm. here he is doing good to those that he created out of clay on the day that he rested for them and gave them this. It's just a, it's just wild. This all, this all began not with the Pharisees. It began with his um, neighbors, 
that lived with him. They knew him inside out. Um, and they were asking him all of these questions mm. um, about who did this? Where is he? Da, 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 da. How, how could all of this stuff happen? You know, and uh, he tells them, you know, repeated, well, he tells them very clearly. And, uh, well, where is he now? He says, I don't know. And uh, because of this, they couldn't accept his, um, you know, testimony. Um, and it brings back, you know, do we expect it, uh, accept the testimony of each other when mm. we, um, mm. when Christ does something um, in our lives, uh, we see something that we know is biblical and, and, and from God, uh, do we accept that testimony? And they're not mm. accepting his testimony, uh, the, his, his neighbors and those who live with him, mm. unfortunately. And so, yeah. Yeah. so we got to vet this and we'll bring it to a higher authority. We'll bring it to the <laughs> Pharisees. Surely, surely the ver Pharisees will be able to tell us um, what if this truly is uh, from God or not, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, and yeah. it was right before their eyes. Um, they knew who this guy was. Some said, well, it looks like him. Well, no, he doesn't know. I think it is him. Yeah, it is him, you know? And um, they just couldn't accept his testimony, unfortunately. Uh, they, yeah. they could have been blessed in a great way. Um, how many today are the same? How, how yeah, many exactly? How many? How many of God's remnant people and leaders today have been born blind and refused to receive His testimony? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what Jim brought up too is the three groups of people. Mm -hmm. Yep, the neighbors, the parents, and himself. And aren't the Pharisees supposed to, you know, accept two or more witnesses? But then you also have the apostles, True. the neighbors, and the Pharisees. Yeah. you know well if if you if you believe this testimony um you you would have said wow he's he's in the area i've got to go find this uh <laughs> jesus I, i've got to go find him i i must find him mm -hmm. you know they, they would have been blessed um by his um mm -hmm. uh, reports well you remember how verse chapter eight ended they took up stones to cast at Jesus. So, yeah, they already had him. Had yeah. a, he already had a target on his back. He did. He did. But yeah. he, even though he had a target on his back, it, if this is continuous, he he saw a need there and he stopped. He didn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. He didn't have fear. Christ did not no. fear those stones. You know. No. As as I was looking through one of the commentaries here, I was. It brought something to it brought me to this point that's um, I hadn't thought of. Um, the the Pharisees had to had to in their own mind and for the people try to disprove Jesus because they were expecting that pompous king to arrive, that grandeur. Um, I don't know how else to say it, but they were expecting you know a mighty king, someone with. Um, power and just not a humble Status. man. Yeah, a warrior, a warlord. <laughs> yeah, not someone who. Hey, go wash in the pool. You know, fill those jugs with water. This just blew them. Had to blow all of their thoughts. Just this man cannot be our expected king, especially when he doesn't even keep the Sabbath. <laughs> no. <laughs> To our way of thinking. <laughs> the way we think he should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, there you go. The way we Talk think about confirmation bias. You know, and <laughs> we need to evaluate, do we have confirmation bias? Do we have preconceived ideas that we're not willing to? I think we certainly do. And, yeah. you know, I mean, this goes all the way back to the anointing of King David. And, you know, we had to go through all of Jesse's sons. Um, why did the people choose Saul? Because he was big and strong and handsome, mm. you know, yeah. soldier. Um, so we look towards a certain a way a person looks and a certain way they behave. And Jesus was so mm -hmm. humble and there was nothing about his appearance that made him look like a king uh, nor where he came from yeah. so it was so opposite of what they were thinking 
Right. Mm. Uh, and when God chose David and passed by all his brothers, he said that God does not judge as men do. Yes, mm -hmm. right. There's another passing by. And David was a type of Christ, really, <laughs> in many passing ways. Passing by, passed up, yeah. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. Amen. So, so when you mentioned um, the three angels' messages, I was thinking of, you know, worship the creator. Mm -hmm. And uh, it reminded me of something. I can't remember where I heard it, but apparently the Messianic Jews use this as one of the signs that he is the Messiah. He is the creator because he healed somebody that didn't have any sight. Mm. and in that they assume that he had no eyes and then i thought gosh yeah hence the clay mm -hmm. so this should have been proof to them that he was the creator oh, wow. and there's the thir third angel's message you know there's the yeah. the creator wow well, that's another good point thought. in that yeah well, that's very strong clay. thank you brian yeah amen And really, in all of his miracles, you know, he, we probably can see this repeating, bringing us back to creation. That's probably why he looks so different. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, the blind man had to have changed once he could see. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell when someone is blind just by looking at them. You know, by their hood, their eyes almost look hooded and, and they're dark. And, you know, this guy could see. He's probably like, you know, right. the wolf. and the joy. I mean, it's got to transform him. So people oh, yeah, have. His, yeah, his countenance and all, right? Mm hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah. if he actually, you know, just had like, sockets but not eyeballs and then he put the clay in and eyeballs that could see came out that's yeah. <laughs> i was thinking that's about more that. than just taking blind eyeballs and making them to be able to see right mm -hmm. yeah well and it's it's not only that i mean if you were to take and they've seen this with animals you know cover their eyes when they're kittens or puppies and even though they're normal eyes they can't see they're blind after a period of time because the brain has not made connections. So not only were the eyes healed, but the connections to the brain and even the comprehension, mm -hmm. you know, of yes. what you're seeing had to, mm -hmm. it was a huge miracle. <laughs> yeah. 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 From a physiological standpoint, it was yeah, incredible. It really was. Isn't God amazing how he can take something that we would normally read and just say, that's a nice story. And when you start mm -hmm. digging in. Yeah. It's, it's a big like, message. Yeah. It, a uh, message. Yeah. It's a message to his church. It's yeah. a message to his church today. You people we, are we, yeah. we can marvel that, you know, you know, he, healing that man's eyes was was so easy for God. It was nothing. Right. <laughs> but healing spiritual blindness is uh, uh, an infinitely greater miracle because it's so difficult to actually change mm -hmm. the heart. Yeah. It really is. Once you follow the deception, it, I think it takes an act of God to get it back out. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, that's where it's the truth yeah, versus the lie. Repeated. Yeah. And that's verse, uh, well, verse verse 30, right? When the man an answered them, or 31, I'm sorry. He says, now we know that God heareth not sinners. Well, we know God hears sinners because he heard us. But um, but if any man be a worshiper of God, this is why this is directed at the Pharisees. If any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. These Pharisees thought they were worshiping God, but they were not doing his will. And I think that's 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 where this sinner is distinct from a sinners who have all sinned and fall short of the glory. These are those these sinners are those who reject reject the counsel of God or, or the reality of, of who God is. In the witness God, of who God is and the miracle of who God is. those that 
Mm-hmm. What, Brian? Well, I was just thinking that they rejected the truth. They rejected the truth about God. I was thinking, as you were speaking, I was thinking about verse 41. They, they, they thought they knew they had those preconceived ideas that have already been spoken about and that Dan prayed about. And those that are blind, those that have questions, those that are wondering where, what the truth is, they're the ones that um, come to believe but it's those with preconceived ideas and are so set in their ways that they're the ones that remain in their sins, that unbelief, when they hear the truth, they don't believe it. And that's the sin. And and to that end, Brian, that's uh, what what Jesus is referring to. I think in verse 39 for judgment, I've come into the world and the judgment being, what is your perception of the creator? What is your perception of God? Do you perceive him as vindictive, as punishing, as uncaring, as not long-suffering and forgiving? What is the judgment that he is? I'm, I'm before you now, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to um, uh, see who really is the true God and what his character is. That's the judgment that's coming yes. upon us right now. Mm. Amen. So it's like him saying, um, what is the name of God? Did you get like, that? Did you get that, Jim? Yes, yes. For my name's sake, for the truth about who I really am. What is the character of God? What is my name? Amen. Mm-hmm. Well, they couldn't reason based on the evidence because all because they had the <laughs> preconceived ideas, and all the evidence needed to be conformed to their preconceived ideas. <laughs> And See, this were, is where they, they were resisting where they, the conviction. Yeah. And this right. is where senses Amen. this is where senses were a good thing because they were not trusting their senses. They they could see and they could hear what was happening here, and they, they refused it. They refused the reality. As did the parents out of fear. Yeah, the parents were right out of out of fear, they weren't gonna divulge anything. Ask him. And and you know, the the the, the evidence is there, and then the uh, reasoning is is there about what law, what exists, um, that uh, when he says there, um, since the world began, was, yes. it heard, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of uh, one that was born blind, you know, yes. what, what, what is that, you know, uh, yeah. and, and I think well, he's never them, happened, and, and I think he's bringing him to um, Genesis 1. Uh, he's bringing yes. them right to Genesis. There. Mm-hmm. Okay. I see. I see a double conviction in verse thirty-one too. Not only is God sending the arrow conviction that the one who healed him on the Sabbath day must have been doing the will of God, mm. which which they, they thought it was a sin, and he's saying to them, "No, that was do- he was doing the will of God. That's the only way that this could have happened." But mm. then. I, I actually hadn't thought of it before, but he's also, I'm sure God was sending the conviction that God doesn't hear your prayers <laughs> because Amen. they were praying for a warlord Messiah to come and conquer the Romans and set up a kingdom for them to rule. And that prayer was not being heard. <laughs> so mm-hmm. really, he's saying to them, well, you're either not a worshiper of God or you're not doing his will because God doesn't hear you. But he does hear this man. That's true. Amen. He had a lot of wisdom there, didn't he, when he said that in verse 31. I'm, I'm sure that's he, why they fought against it so much. Yeah, that was the Holy Spirit for sure speaking. Yeah. I don't think he even understood yeah. what he, fully what he was saying. Yeah. And, that's, and then, and, go ahead. I was going to say uh, to, to uh, Brother Craig's point, uh, that's what Paul's saying in Hebrews. There remains a rest. Christ yeah. was trying to give them a rest mm-hmm. by doing these, if you will, performing these miracles through his father to give them a rest. He wanted to give them a rest. They would not enter into that rest. They didn't want to enter into it, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. That's the because truth really about God the, that gives us that rest. Really what Sabbath was all about was entering into that rest. Right. 
entering into a, a, an understanding of the character of God, which gives us peace and gives us rest. Yes, amen. You know, they kind of answered their, <laughs> their, their own question, right? Like, well, they're, well, when he, when he says, now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. Right. And then they have to come back and tell them, why are you telling us we're educated? You're a sinner from birth. And here, here he is again, coming back to their idea of who God is, because even in the beginning, they don't say that they're, they're, a, they're, they're a gods. They say they're, they're Moses's disciples. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Again, right there, they're not acknowledging the God of Moses. Mm -hmm. in, in that, Sue, you can see, um, um, and with the Pharisees, I can see myself in the conflicts that I go through. Uh, well, really, can he do this? And how does he do this? And <laughs> do I really believe this? And, um, you know, I, what I'm aware of is that, you know, uh, my under theoretical my perspective is a disorder I, this is what so that whole internal conflict that the pharisees and the neighbors are going through uh, i find myself at times uh, that i go through that as well you know i have to share a story my my nephew james you guys have prayed for him uh, my mom when she was in the charismatic catholic thing she she would take him and bring him to to, to healing services and um, th then I became a, a Christian and I said to her, I said, you know, mom, really, do you, do you really want him to see what's here rather than him? His first vision would be Jesus Christ himself. And she's thought about that. And she was like, yeah, wow. And I'm thinking about this man who's been blind all his life. And he's not only hearing the people, but he's actually seeing the lie because he knew truth and how that must have been what an eye opener no, pun know, intended. As well. <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> well it's when you, when you look at 35 also um jesus um comes and finds him then he says do you believe in the son of god wouldn't you, you know, I, I hear when you would expect, oh, here comes the guy who healed me. He's going to ask how I enjoy my sight. No, he doesn't do that. He, he says, no, nope, do you believe in the Son of God? And so this also gets this man thinking, gets mm -hmm. him off the physical and into the spiritual. Mm, good point, Dan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's too bad that who is he, Lord, but he gets there. Mm. Yeah, well, that's us, right? Yeah, we don't know who God is. And here he's going to the right source. He's going to Jesus himself. You know? Tell me who he is. Jesus is calling him to be his disciple. You know, he could have just healed his blindness, but Jesus is seeking him out because he wants to do more for this man. He sought him out from the beginning. He saw something in this man that he he he's inviting him to walk with him. Well, not only Except did him as the Messiah, not, not only did Jesus say, you have seen him, mm -hmm. but you oh, are you hearing him. him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas See. when you go further, the Pharisees not only don't see him, they don't hear him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wasn't just wanting to heal this, just this man. I mean, I know yeah. this man was the beneficiary of a miracle, but he was wanting to save the Pharisees and anybody else who had this misconception of God. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, you know, he, he, he throws them a strike in verse 41. I think it's been touched upon a little, uh, but he throws yeah. them a strike here. And he said, it, it has nothing to do with being blind mm -hmm. at all, because he said, if, well, if you were blind, you know, um, you, you're not going to have any sin. But they, then he comes back and says, because you have this perception, mm -hmm. you think you know, Jim, Therefore, you are in bondage. You are mm. a slave to sin. Oh, I mean, yeah. it has yeah. nothing to do with with being blind and not being blind. It seems it has to do with what is my 
as Brian has talked about so much, what is my understanding and belief of the Almighty One, of the Creator? Mm -hmm. How, what do I believe who He is? Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 the telling mm -hmm. um, truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Those those are striking words mm. uh, because it began with that question. Yes, you know the disciple saying, "Well, who has sin here?" You know, and it really began in chapter eight when Jesus said to them, "Which of you can convict me of sin?" You know, mm. and it, it gets back again to people's or the our individual perceptions of Christ. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, I think I they said, and they said, and they said, you know, no, no one with sin can can do this miracle. Mm -hmm. No, right? They called Christ out for who he was. He wasn't a sinful man. You know, it's for interesting because this whole chapter, there's so many layers, but one of the layers is what is sin? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that yes. theme runs from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is sin? Yeah. Transgression against the law. Yeah. It, well, they, they wouldn't confess their, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's like they're choosing to be blind versus this man who was poor and blind. Yeah, right. And, right. and don't we see the different people? They're, they're never we looking. see a remnant. Yeah. Yeah. We see the majority are in the wrong, as usual, <laughs> and the remnant is just a small, either yeah. individual or a small group, whoever else is accepting the messiah here but again we see it the two people groups and a maturing of each group there's a three mm -hmm. calling out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're there's a three calling out to the three groups of people that were addressed mm -hmm. and come out of her my people no yeah it's love you know it we can say think well jesus is zinging them here but mm -hmm. He's no. he's doing it out of love. He's trying yeah, he's to open their eyes. He's no. trying to wash out all these misconceptions that they have. Mm. Yes. It wasn't just the Pharisees that were blind, though. Even the disciples were blind. Mm -hmm. How many times did Christ tell them things and they, they could not comprehend? They even, he even told them about the crucifixion and they didn't comprehend. And until... Until after his resurrection, they were as blind as the Pharisees. But I think their hearts were different. <laughs> I think they're, they're different. They're, you yeah. know, their their hearts weren't in the same place. They yeah. may have. They both were, but she makes a good point. The, the, the difference is faith. The, the, the Pharisees mm -hmm. and the scribes never followed. They followed him around, but never in faith, looking to see if he really was the true Amen. messiah or a prophet or anything they were only trying to find fault in in a, to be able to accuse him of sin when he said you know, you know okay. which of you convince of me of sin every single one of them was trying to convict him of sin yet but, couldn't. but but in 16 but yeah in 16 there's a division there if you look at 16 how can a man who was a sinner do such thing? Mm -hmm. And there was a division among them. So some of them right. were yeah. reasoning mm -hmm. based on the evidence. Amen. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And many of them did come to conviction, yeah. you know, in Pente at Pentecost after the resurrection. Yeah. yeah. But the, the disciples, they had faith in Christ. They did. Yes. Just, uh, not Judas didn't really, but the, the rest of them did. Even though, but they were still blind by the, especially by the teachings of the rabbis, which, right. you know, were like the word of God to them. And they didn't. Mm. That's right. <laughs> yes. And that was the problem. The rabbis really were in the place of God in many ways, not only in their own mind, but in the minds of others. Oh. You know, Absolutely. and it says, have no other God before me. They were literally breaking the first commandment. Because they're looking to the rabbis and the leaders rather than to the actual Torah, the actual yeah. word of God. And they had many opportunities in the prophets and Isaiah, et cetera, Micah, hmm. to see that Jesus was fulfillment. Yeah, and Jesus here, um, 
time and time and time and time again in all his um, interactions, he is fulfilling the promise of Genesis 3. Mm -hmm. I will put enmity. He's continually putting enmity between thy seed and, you know, your seed. He's continually mm -hmm. fulfilling that covenant, uh, and he's doing mm -hmm. it here. He's bringing enmity. Well, I love how in 8, he ends off, most surely I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Talking and about the, chapter 8 or verse Chapter eight? 8, sorry. Chapter 8, 58. Then he goes into again saying, as long as I am in the world, I am. Mm -hmm. That's also, true. We, also, this, also in 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, if, if we were to circle every time he said, I am, and they knew what he meant in the Hebrew when he said, I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't just in the sentence as we're reading it. Amen. Right. Okay, Craig, so we've got to bring up that in Leviticus mind. 26. She's not up going ahead. we got to get Leviticus <laughs> in here and make it a good study. And, it, and if, if someone wants to explain to Sue what's going on with this, uh, I... I we already did with the the, the darkness in, in the middle of the pattern yep. of seven. We made a pact <laughs> supposedly long ago so, that we would not read ahead. We would try to concentrate on the chapters involved. And <laughs> you're going to give her a YouTube strike? Re religiously. <laughs> but, but it's okay would, if we go backward, isn't it? A little bit. Absolutely. That's all she did. Religiously, seriously, <laughs> someone will bring up something ahead. Just, Always. you know, what they're trying to do is they're trying to put that thorn in my side and just keep pushing <laughs> we, it. I guess, Dan, some of us weren't on the night that agreement was made. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think there were Pharisees on that night. We all, we all sin and fall short. <laughs> Or exactly, ahead. or fall ahead. That's what we just said. I know how to get a reaction out of you now, though. <laughs> yeah. My brother, when I used to get, he used to try to tease me, and he'd get me riled up, and he'd go. <laughs> well, you can get a reaction out of Dan another way. Show up early, and you print your dice a shock. Um, I was uh, early. It was just Dan and I in the beginning. I'm I didn't getting, hear it talk. <laughs> I'm getting better at it, Sue. You can see that I immediately did not say anything. I just smiled. So anyway, let's... <laughs> I, I apologize for breaking into this. this I is love you, brother. Uh-huh. <laughs> when, when you look in verse 7 there, it says to him to go wash. Uh, it reminds me of um, um, David. Have mercy on me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. <laughs> According to thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me from my um, iniquities, and cleanse me of my sins. And I just wonder, is that wash a baptism that he's going oh. through at this point in time? Totally. Because mm -hmm. yeah. he's, willingly, he's willingly going. Right. right. When, we're, when, we're, when we want to be baptized, we're willingly going. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What? Not only my feet, all of me. So Jesus I love is, that. It symbolically is um, actually baptizing him. Usually it was his disciples that baptized. Right. His following through with the command, his having already laid hands on him, he now following through and going to the pool is um, in some ways Jesus is baptizing him, I wonder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he sent him to a pool called Sent. Yeah, and that's uh, you know, I I saw that in the uh in in the Strongs, and they gave a, a root a Hebrew root seventy nine seventy five seventy nine seventy five yeah I think it is uh, Shiloh, and it means a, a fountain of Jerus or a fountain of Jerusalem. That's actually the pool that ends at Hezekiah's tunnel, so mm -hmm. Hezekiah's tunnel emptied into that, so that's the one they. Tunneled through the stone to get water to Jerusalem. Wow. So it's free flowing. It's flowing from the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Wasn't it also to keep the water from their enemies? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, in, in going there, in responding to the call to be sent and be a witness, you know, that, that process, when, when we do that, that process is part of what makes us clean, uh, uh, that, that makes us, gives us eyes to see through God's eyes is, is sharing in that experience of witnessing to others and making your religion practical, you know, a faith that works by love. You're not mm. just having a theory like the, the Pharisees, but he went out and became a disciple and became sent and witnessed to others. Yes. And Amen. When we do that, that's what has a similar effect on us spiritually. It, it, mm. It's possible, um, and I'm speculating here, that nobody guided him there at all. Um, that, yes. uh, he, he went, went around. there of his own. He might have known it from memory. Yeah. yeah, he noted from memory. And he, you know, just like Jesus, you know, when we read about them being on the lake and all of a sudden the boat was on the other side of the shore when Jesus arrived, you know, it, it, it's possible he, he arrived there with no accompaniment and that uh, Christ... Um, spiritually by the Holy Spirit led him to that pool. Mm -hmm. He definitely knew where he was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. I mean, for at least some people who uh, have a, a sense like that, like eyesight, that's, you know, not working. At least sometimes the other senses are heightened in their ability. Yes. That, you know, the, the brain capacity of processing power is put into the other senses and they can, they can hear better or smell better or their sense of direction and all those things can, can be heightened over an ordinary person. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, I because of the limitation. I, I can, can testify that with my, my nephew James who's blind. Hmm. You can smell water. Yeah. You know, like you can smell the rain and the snow. Mm -hmm. You know what's yeah. cool? My brother, had, my brother had cerebral palsy, but he had it. He could remember things from when he was a baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, he could remember everything that ever happened. And he had extraordinary hearing. Mm -hmm. I love how he would not let them take his testimony away from him Amen. he was gonna stand on that yep and you're not taking it away from me no even when they tried to redirect them no no you know i think i think it was interesting that um when jesus knew that he had been cast out he really cared about this man enough to go find him and to speak with him and tell him you know who he was. He gives he gives gives the Pharisees in this in that that discourse he has. He says, "Now, do you want to be disciples of him?" <laughs> I love it. And you kind of see in just the structure of the passage. You know, there's just a few verses in the beginning where Jesus interacts with him, and then there's a very long stretch where he's sort of off on his own now. <laughs> yeah. Being a witness, and then Jesus comes and finds him again at the end. Yeah. Very interesting. He will not leave us or forsake us. Not unlike uh, <clears throat> when they were um, um, had Jesus at before Pilate and before Herod, they couldn't find any witnesses to bring anything against him. And despite mm -hmm you know, um, all that the Jews were doing. They, they couldn't bring any witnesses against this man at all. There was no, nothing that they could, um, you know, accuse him of that he did anything, anything wrong at all, um, similar to Christ. That's mm. about it. Verse 39 is kind of interesting where he says, you know, for judgment I am coming to this world where in other places, you know, he says, I, you know, I, I judge no one, or I, I didn't come to judge, or I didn't come to condemn, but to save. And yet here he says he comes for judgment, but we see it was, you know, to give sight or to 
Make blind. Mm. About the, bringing the light. Yeah. Either the light gives you sight or it makes you blind. Yeah, it's <laughs> like the decision. You stare at the sun too long, it can make you blind. Well, there were two witnesses there, right? <clears throat> the mother and the father. Yes. Right. Yeah, it is interesting. I was looking back a little bit recently um, in John 3.17. He says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And then in 5.22, I think it is, for the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son that all should honor the son just as they honor the father. And then in 815, we just read, you judge according to the flesh. This is Jesus speaking. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one, which is interesting. So here, uh, Dan, here's a reason for you to be, be upset. I'm going to go forward. Oh, to, uh, I'm, not, I'm done being upset. <laughs> I'm just going to be upset at people that tell me I'm going to I'm going, to, I'm going to go forward <laughs> to verse 12, uh, to chapter 12, where Jesus says, um, let's see, 1247 and 48. 1247 and 48, he says, and if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. Mm. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So basically, it's whatever you do with my words or whatever you do with the truth, that is what's going to sh judge you. It's going to shape what happens to you in the end. And I had one more here. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 12. I forget where it went. Honestly, this is, let's see where it goes. Uh, Matthew 12, 33 through 37 says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit, brood of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account in the day of judgment. So basically, it's just all based in reality is what I found. It's whatever you do with the truth as Christ presents it or as Christ's life presents it. That's what shapes your future. That's what's so horrible about what we're going through today and everybody living in their own reality. Mm -hmm. Everybody, oh, it's just my truth. It's, you know, that's your truth. This is my truth. Unfortunately, that's shaping what the outcome of our uh, eternity is going to be, or eternity or not. True. John, long, John, John twelve thirty two also says, "Now is the now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out." Yeah. Albert Barnes' commentary says, "The meaning of judgment here should be, I came to declare the condition of men, to show them their duty and danger. My coming will have this effect: that some will be reformed and saved, and some more deeply condemned." And this, this gets back to the question Amen. that, um, you know, when um, Jesus said it wasn't about sin and the, the higher dialogue here again that's going on uh, about judgment, it goes back to what Jesus had said that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would uh, convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. And when he says judgment, he says of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. Again, his bringing that enmity and in, in judging mm. and making a differentiation between um, 
uh, the, the, the kingdom of righteousness and the kingdom of darkness. He's making a clear judgment on um, where the um, origins of evil and sin come from. Yes, and what the result of each kingdom is. The, the if you choose the to follow the he, one kingdom. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, it's, it's just what the end result of following that kingdom is going to be. Mm. You, if, you, if you wind up in, in Satan's kingdom, you're going to wind up dead. Because that's just reality. That's just the way he governs his kingdom. But if you, if you um, decide, you choose to accept the truth and follow the truth, then you, the end result is life. And that was what was depicted in the resurrection of Christ. Mrs. White says that he couldn't see on the other side of the, um, the portals of the, of the tomb. So he understood that he lived a righteous life. So the natural outcome of what he had chosen was going to be life. So the, by God's laws, if you live a righteous life as, as Christ did, of course we can't, but the natural result is life. And in three days, he was, he was, um, he was resurrected. Hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, um, Craig. No, that's all right. Um, you know, the way I'm, I'm seeing it is when Jesus came in his, his first advent, he didn't come to judge the world. He didn't come to judge humans. He came to judge the angels. He announces judgment against against Satan and the evil angels, and they're judged. And you know, we know inspiration tells us how the holy angels lost all sympathy for Satan and his rebellion at the cross. But it's the the second advent is the one that's connected with his judgment of humans. See, my understanding was is that. That's that's the um, that's where we make the judgment, or what the results of the judgment that we've made about him are revealed. Yes, but the Jew he, he ended up judging the Jews, but that wasn't his purpose in coming. They they just hardened their hearts and <laughs> you know basically well, like, started a war against him, even though. They didn't need to do that. That's not why he was there. Well, when you're faced with the truth, you have to make a decision. And that's what they did. And they got the natural yes. outcome of their decisions, which was death. And the Christians, those that followed Christ, got life. They ran. They listened to his words. And they ran um, when the Roman armies retreated at the abomination of desolation. So they got their choice they chose christ and they listened and they fled and everyone else that did not choose christ and his kingdom but chose the security of tradition um wound up reaping wound up reaping um that which they sowed into their own hearts i love this one thing where in in um in 35 where he said to him do you believe in the son of god and he answered who is he then I may believe in him. So I, I just take this as, 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 as seeing him at his, at his second coming and if we're alive or even if we're not, right? Yeah. That we both, we will have that. Not, not, not only will we see him, but he will be talking with us. And I just think that, that, that is that is so cool because he experienced him, not not with his eyes. Yeah, because he hasn't mm -hmm. he, hadn't, he hadn't seen anything he had done, but he probably experienced him with it, with his with his hearing and then what had happened with him, and you know and that's 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 how it's going to be with us. We experience him, right? We're growing in him, and we're 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 seeing the things that he is doing in our life, even though. The seeing isn't a visual thing, you know. It's not a visual thing. Not and in, in, in that completion, we will actually see him with our eyes, and that mm -hmm. it's going to be such a 
site. It's, it's as, as uh, we talked about, I think, uh, <clears throat> Brother Craig reinforced that last week, that all of that will merge together. Mm -hmm. uh, everything will merge together. We'll see clearly, you know, uh, and um, that this, this had to be complete restoration of this gentleman <laughs> when, when um, <laughs> Jesus says, well, I, I'm he, you're looking at him. It, it must have been an incredible, I mean, it, it, I, I can imagine the glory cloud that surround them. It had to be an intense glory cloud, um, as great as what the glory cloud was on Mount Sinai and followed them through the desert. Had to be oh, an yeah. incredible glory cloud. Um, it, it just uh, chills down my back. Me they, too. Uh, I was. <laughs> I yeah. was chills. What 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 that wow. encounter was like between him and his Creator? Uh, yeah. It's going to be cool to talk to him, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> no self in him he, went, he fell right to Jesus feet yeah I just love the great the the um, the uh, direct correlation between the physical and the spiritual and I know it's already been mentioned but I just I just love that you know I'm fit he physically heals and recreates this guy so he can see and then we have the spiritual at the end. Mm. It's yeah. just such, it's so, so beautiful. Yeah. And he's yeah. doing that with us and he's going to finish us up. And that's going to be neat. Yeah. In, in, back back to uh, <clears throat> Sue's point that there was, you know, there were Pharisees there that were not completely, um, you know, rigid in their views, you know, that there was a division and, Maybe I'm reading into it, but verse 40, and some of the Pharisees, which were with him, this seems very empathic on their part. Some that were with him heard these words and said to him, am I blind too? You know, and asking, you know, in a sincere way, yeah. reaching out to Christ, am I blind too? You know, yeah. and so it, it seems to be an outreach to Jesus pleading and not mm -hmm. just uh you know, um, a defensive uh, response. Well, yeah, because he was going to reach the house of God, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That that is like. So I, I I like to think they those some of those that you know who you know were, were not uh, so um, you know against him uh, that um, you know the, their hearts were starting to move towards Christ. Well, uh, yeah, I think th those are the ones that were reasoning based on the evidence. Right. Yeah. right. And that those words may have been a been a seed in their hearts mm -hmm. that they asked themselves later on, or like a Nicodemus, you know, pondering these things in their heart. Mm. I'm going to bed. <laughs> okay, you get to say closing prayer. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lori was waiting to have somebody else do it. <laughs> Why is everybody always picking on me? <clears throat> anyway, Father in Heaven, we have learned so much from your word tonight. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that has come to be among us. We bask in that, Lord. And we just ask you now that as we close that you will continue to be with us, each one of us in our lives, as we go about doing your work. And we thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you gave us this word to show us who you are and that we know that we can trust you in all things. So we praise you, we honor you, and we ask you, Lord, to come in and be the Lord of our hearts, the Lord of our lives. And we thank you that you answer those prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.